Welcome to a Parallel Project Training APM Project Management Qualification Podcast based on the APM Body of Knowledge 6th edition. You should be using this in conjunction with our e-learning, study guide and potentially a tutor-led course. For more information, please visit www.parallelprojecttraining.com. Hello, this is Parallel Project Training Podcast with uh, John Bolton and Paul Neighbour and we're looking at the APM um, Project Management Qualification and we've got to um, risk management, risk and issue management. Um, and the um, assessment criteria for this are explain the stages in the risk management process and compare the responses to risk management in terms of risk as a threat or an opportunity and explain the benefits of project risk management. I suppose we should do these in reverse order really, start about the benefits of risk management first before we jump into the, the process, do you think? I suppose explain what risk is really. Yeah, go on then. Shall I read after what it says in the book, in the APM body of knowledge? So risk management is a process that allows individual risk events and the overall risk to be understood and managed in a proactive way, optimising success by minimising threats and maximising opportunities. It's all in there, really, isn't it? So allows individual risk events, so those are the things that you see on a risk log or risk register, and the overall risk to the project to be um, understood and managed. Mm-hmm. So they, they talk about two levels. They talk about project risk, which is the exposure, um, which is the whole, the risk of the overall project. Is it a high-risk project? Is it a low-risk project? We use that for options, really, or deciding whether we want to proceed with a project. And then we talk about risk events, so that's managing the consequences of individual risks, minimising their impact on the project or maximising the opportunity from those risks. So... Um, Explain each stage in the risk management process. So the 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 APM have picked up the um, out of the old PRAM guide, project risk analysis and management guide, the um, five stages, which is initiate, identify, assess, plan, and um, implement those responses. So it's almost II APM again. So initiation first stage. You write a risk management plan, which is same as a um, communication plan or quality management plan. Just defines how we're going to implement the risk management. It's the same process. principle. It's not the same. Yes, as, yeah, it's the same yes. principle. It goes same in the principle. project management plan. Yes, that's right. So the, P, so the PMP. And what, so a risk management plan tells you who's going to do what, what tools are going to use, what techniques they're going to use, how, what values you're going to place on what things, what the process is going to be, what the process is going to be. How you going to, so a risk management plan is not about how you're going to manage individual risks. It's how you manage, it's the, how you manage the process of managing risks. Yeah. Can okay. we just have a little sideline? Because all those plans have the same sort of structure. So a quality plan or risk management plan or a configuration management plan. They all generally have roles and responsibilities, purpose mm, of this plan, right. roles and responsibilities, procedures and processes that we're going to follow. Tools. Tools, that techniques, were templates, templates and techniques. That were, so right. actually There's that sort of model mean. that we just looked at for risk management can be applied to describing quality management plan. That's or right. a, I think. No, it <laughs> I can. Think safe. It I can. You come on the that. course. Yes. Then you do it. Yes. You, you, do, you, you break it all down in those... Yes. Headings. Yes, that's right. So you have a common template for those. So we're quite happy with that. So it's, it's a policy and procedure again. It sits in the PMP. The next step is to identify all the risks. And there's a couple of techniques we can use in this brainstorming, interviewing, Delphi, prompt lists, checklists, um, assumption analysis. Um, most people are happy with most of those except maybe Delphi. Delphi is a form of consulting experts. You ever done Delphi? Have you used Delphi techniques or anything? Um no, I don't think so. Michael. It's incredibly expensive. It is. So it's it's you get the world experts and you send them a project brief and they analyse it and mm. send you back their risk logs and you try and build a a consensus. A consensus amongst them. I've only ever seen it well, I got so excited once I saw a report on economic forecasting using Delphi techniques. <laughs> the only time I've I've done all most of the others. Someone told me it was how they, they figured out the was it I can't remember which one it was, the Challenge or the Columbia shuttle crash. Okay. They 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 didn't know what the cause was. So they got all the So they Delphi asked group. all the various rocket scientists and mechanical uh-huh. engineers and the people involved in you know high altitude uh-huh. work and stuff. And they they asked them all individually what they thought could go uh-huh. wrong and they uh-huh. drew up a shortlist, circulated it and then had 
um, a, a series of plenary sessions around the world. Okay. Where they invited everybody in to discuss and debate, sent them all away again. Yes. Then they asked representatives from the key bodies to come to a, a session in yes. America. So I just say, incredibly and they, they all said it's either this or it's this or it's this. Yes. And they came up with like a statistical probability for the three options. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then when they compared it with a video film, they saw the, sh- the tile falling off. Yes. And that was one of the options. Oh, they good. they thought, good. oh, well, that's why good. it happened. Because the other one was high altitude lightning, wasn't it? Tile falling off or Don't know. some other structural failure or something. There, was, yeah. there were three Possibles. that they came up with that, that were more good. likely than all the others. Yeah. I think that's why you don't see Delphi on many projects. And the only one that causes confused is prompt list. So a prompt list is a list of headings. Yeah. So commercial, technical, uh, safety, whereas a checklist is a predefined yeah, list yeah. of all the... I think a PESL analysis is a form of prompt list. It does, yes. You could use PESL as your yeah. prompt list heading. But just don't confuse one with the other. Because if you write prompt list, as you start writing about Delphi in here, yes, I think it's valid, but I think you might just confuse people. Yes, yes. I mean, mostly they're commercial, technical. Strategic. Um, strategic. Operational. Assumption analysis. Um, so if assumption proves not to be true, then there might be a risk. Um, and then you've set up a risk register or risk log. And having identified all the risks, we have to decide which are the most important. And the way we use that is using one of these probability impact grids where we assess the likelihood of the risk happening and its impact on the project. And those that have the highest probability and the highest impact are the most significant risks. Mm. And you can use this weighting that we've put here um, or you'll be given this, these numbers in the exam. People sometimes panic that they have to learn the flipping weightings. And you just multiply the weighting for probability times by the weighting for impact, and the, the score that becomes the highest is the, 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 the most significant risk. So having identified the key risks, the next job is to um, come up with an action, mitigation action. Oh, I don't always call them mitigation actions. Everyone does that, don't they? But the APM split them into different types. So you can accept the risk, you can just live with it, avoid it by descoping, transfer it to somebody else, reduce the risk. Or for opportunities you can reject, enhance, exploit or share them. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's other actions you might do on top of that. So you might allocate some actions to people mm-hmm. or you might allocate a budget to manage that risk or you might set a date by which you're going to review that particular risk. So there are other, other actions other than just setting these um, mm. objectives. And then the last final bit is to implement those responses and drive it through and keep, keep updating the risk review because it, it may possibly change. So in the book we've got a nice little risk register. You're very quiet, John. You don't like risk management, do you? Oh, you told me to shut up, so I shut up. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, I, I, I find it difficult to be convincing with risk. Do you? <laughs> yes. So I'll just let you do it. But, um, the, yeah, so I think in the exam, I mean, some of the things I struggle with, I've, you and I have had endless debates about yes. this. And I think you do have to have a large dollop of common sense with all this, because I think this process is comes across as being rather non-negotiable and, and, and a bit too... The stress. problem with risk management, as you just said in the discussion offline, is that the whole of project management is about risk management. Yes. And so to put it in a separate box just doesn't make any sense. But it gives it a focus that it doesn't need. Yes. You know, it, uh, risk management permeates everything you do. Yes. And everything you do is for risk management. Yes. One of the main reasons you run projects like projects is to do risk management, yes. and the fact you've now sort of given it its own section. Yes. And is it really? I mean, you could argue that about benefits as well, which is why I consider that to be another cottage industry. Do you? I'm an advocate of benefits management, actually, but only because people don't think about it. And the trouble with risk management, I think about it, I think about it too much. I think it can. The process can become more important than the management of the risk. The, the, the well, I think, you, I think you lose sight of the main main event. Yes, really. that's right. Because you, you, you yeah. But so, I think if you you know if you've got if you're going to do the exam, I think you ignore risk at your peril. So despite all the all the kind of criticisms, so typical and questions might be describe a process. Why is it important? Yeah. What are the benefits yeah. of risk management? I think there's an opportunity for them to ask you ask you what a risk log looks like. Yeah. What entries might be on it, and they might even ask you to suggest some entries on it. Yes. 
Um, Talk about the different identification techniques. Yeah, I think you need to just you need to just worry about what the headings are, not necessarily the format particularly. Um, well, there's a. I mean, we've got a risk register in our our book, but so most organisations have a, a different format. Most organisations put it risks and issues on the same log, or in a database. Yeah, well, same thing. Yeah. yeah, they just put them in the same place. I mean, don't get confused between risks and issues, though. So that moves on to risk issues. Should we move on to issues then? Is that the next podcast? Oh, it is, yes. So that's the next assessment criteria. Yes. Good. So I think it's a rich, rich vein of, of questions in the, in, in mm. the, in the exam. The, mm. the challenge is keeping it fresh in a, in a project environment, really. You generally find it's done at the business case or the bidding phase or the... Um, PMP and it just falls out, and of. it falls falls by the wayside. Really, yeah. Um, it comes back to the advantages and disadvantages of it, really. Because I mean, the, the, I think the problem is the 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 organisation gets the advantages, but the project manager gets the pain. Yes. So it's a bit like know, governance. Yeah. yeah. Governance so, is so great. The project manager kind of can't help but think, well, this is just doing the blinking obvious. Because you know? I know what these risks are. I know are. what these risks are, so well, I've got to write them down. Yeah, yeah. And, and a lot of what you do in a, in a mature organisation is risk management naturally anyway. Yes. So the reason you put, you know, on a, on a building site, the reason you put handrails on scaffolding is stop people falling off. Okay, I think that's a really important point too. Um, most projects are successful day to day. And the reason they're successful is they have built into their method the, or the management of risk. Mm. So they have processes and procedures that they've worked up over the years that manage most of the risks that they come across. That's right. And so um, one of my clients really focuses risks on abnormal events. So from there, risk management is, what are the things in this project that we're not going to capture by our normal process? Mm. So they won't let them put things like uh, bad weather or um, all the subcontractor goes bankrupt all the standard stuff because they say well we know how to manage those we manage those day in day out but what is it about this specific project that's going to catch us out it's not in our normal operating practices i i yes and i think that the, the more process you have the the less ingenious people become that's right so it it it, it, it Cause most organizations just get along fine without risks <laughs> but but to think of the that one instance that is completely so off the wall but plausible is creativity and the risk management to be to be useful requires creativity yes that's right i mean we we did i'm not sure if you were there when we asked them to come up with the most implausible but yes most, most most wacky but plausible risk and we yes. gave a box of sweets if they got the prize didn't we yes do you remember and we've got some odd we've got some peculiar ones but then one one group said well actually i can't remember what it was now blah, 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 blah. and everyone went actually it's a really good point yes. you know that really could happen so the directors of that organization they they know their people can manage the day-to-day -day risks but what they're worried about is is there anything in this project that could really threaten our organization well i, I totally i'm totally bought into that and i'm i'm bought into risk management as well it might not sound like it but so they filter out all the chaff hmm so it, it just gets cluttered up with all the noise. Yes, but, and most of the risks on the risk register, we know how to manage them anyway, mm. because we wouldn't be in business. We'd have been, <laughs> we'd have been out of business ten years ago if we hadn't managed those risks. Yes. So, um, but there's not many do that. Um, but I think that's a really good approach. Okay, good. Thank you, John. Cool. We hope you enjoyed this podcast and found it informative. To order a study guide, e-learning, or a tutor-led course to go with this podcast, please visit www.parallelprojecttraining.com.